Today we're going to be looking at another XKCD what if video. Specifically, could you survive a nanosecond on the sun? I wonder how many people are going to suggest you do this at night. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. I'm engineering operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check this out. This question comes from AJ, who wrote, When I was about eight years old, shoveling snow on a freezing day in Colorado, I wished that I could instantly be transported to the surface of the sun just for a nanosecond and then instantly transported back. I figured this would be long enough to warm me up, but not enough to harm me. Ooh, I don't know about that. But it's interesting he's saying the surface of the sun and not the sun's core. That's important. What would actually happen? Believe it or not, this wouldn't even warm you. The temperature of the surface of the sun is about 5800K, give or take. If you stay there for- That is one thing. I mean, there's plenty of things on Earth that are hotter than the surface of the sun, such as lightning, an arc welder, plasma torch. The surface isn't really that hot. For a while, you'd be cooked to a cinder, but a nanosecond is not very long. It's enough time for light to travel about a foot. That's fascinating. So rulers, which are about 30 centimeters in length, are a light nanosecond, more or less. I'm going to assume you're facing toward the sun. In general, you should avoid looking directly at the sun, but it's hard to avoid when it takes up a full 180 degrees of your view. In that nanosecond, about a microjoule of energy would enter your eye. A microjoule of light is not a lot. So the critical question here is how close are you to the sun? Are you within a foot? Because if you are within a foot, for the light to travel there, you're going to get extremely high radiation dose, especially if you're like facing it, like you're laying face down or face up for that matter on your back. It doesn't really matter. But the point is the sunlight and radiation from the sun is all going to pass through you in less than that nanosecond. So you're going to get a very high dose. If you stare at a computer monitor with your eyes closed and then you open them and shut them very quickly, your eye will take in about as much light from the screen during your reverse blink as it would during a nanosecond on the sun's surface. Well, but that's your eye and that's what that's what registered for your eye, though. A lot of it, and just the visible light portion. There's, again, the high energy, gamma rays, x-rays. Energy released from fusion, though that's further away, but just, just from the surface. The sun is quite radioactive. Is there a word for that? Like a blink, but in reverse? <laughs> I feel like there should be a word for that. Anyway. During the nanosecond on the sun, photons from the sun would flood into your eye and strike your retinal cells. Then, at the end of the nanosecond, you'd jump back home. At this point, the retinal cells wouldn't have even begun responding. Over the next few million nanoseconds, or milliseconds, the retinal cells, sure. having absorbed a bunch of light energy, would get into gear and start signaling to your brain that something had happened. <laughs> you would spend one nanosecond on the sun, but it would take 30 million nanoseconds for your brain to notice. That's true. I mean, human reaction speed is far slower than nanoseconds. Nanoseconds are pretty quick even for nuclear reactions. There's a unit of measure uh, called the shake, which is 10 nanoseconds. So here we're talking 10 times faster than certain nuclear reactions. Although, again, in this particular case, radiation that is light-based, the visible light, the UV rays, the infrared, gamma rays, x-rays, that all went through you because, or through most of you, if you happen to be greater than 30 centimeters in width. From your point of view, all you would see is a flash. The flash would seem to last much longer than your time on the sun, only fading as your retinal cells finally quieted down. The energy absorbed by your skin would be minor, about 10 to the minus 5 joules per square centimeter of... Yeah, it's not going to burn you. It's too quick. Though in, in this particular example, though, where it shows him away from the sun and not like touching it face down in the sun, you might be OK as far as the radiation dose is concerned. But if you're on it, that's a problem. It's difficult to calculate what the dose rate is um, because there's just so many factors. But the dose rate's going to be on the order of many billions of sieverts per second. Now you multiply that dose rate times a billionth of a second and you're still getting on the order of tens, hundreds of sieverts. Even single digit sieverts can be lethal. So even at this range of this image, um, I'd say your odds aren't looking good for radiation dose. At four to six sieverts, you're looking at an LD5060, that's 50% of the population dead within 60 days. And at 10 sieverts, death is all but guaranteed. So the heat's not going to get you, the gravity's not going to get you, the pressure's not going to get you, but radiation poisoning will. So this is going to be a painful way to go, unfortunately.
exposed skin. For comparison, according to the IEEE P1584 standard, holding your finger in the blue flame of a butane lighter for one second delivers about five joules per square centimeter to the I like that he referenced arc flash stuff though. That that comes up a lot in really any operation of medium to high voltage switch gears, which you're running a quite a bit at a nuclear power plant. Skin, which is roughly the threshold for receiving a second degree burn. The heat during your sun visit would be five orders of magnitude weaker than that. Mention second degree burns. Um, those calculations that are done and recommend what sort of PPE you have. They, um, the threshold they look at is second degree burns, not first degree burns. So even if you have a sufficient arc rating um, on your flash gear, doesn't mean you're not going to get burned. It just means you're going to live. So other than the dim flash in your eyes, you might not even notice. But what if you got the coordinates wrong? Oh, you got the coordinates wrong. It could up to 100 kilometers. Icarus approved. <laughs> oh, it's going to send you to the core. The sun's surface is relatively cool. It's hotter than, like, Phoenix, but compared to the interior of the sun, it's downright chilly. The surface is a few thousand degrees, but the interior is a few million degrees. Oh, it's more than that. It's like 15 million. What if you spent a nanosecond there? Ooh, let's see. What, what was going to kill you first? So obviously you're going to have extreme radiation dose, but that takes too long to kill you. So you're in plasma. I mean, the sun is a nuclear fusion reactor. So plasma and extreme gravity is occurring to induce nuclear fusion. And you're going to be right in the thick of that. You will be vaporized instantaneously. N nanosecond, no. N it's too hot and too high pressure. 15 million degrees Celsius or Kelvin. I mean, 273 is negligible on that scale. And pressure is in the hundreds of billions of atmospheres. There's not going to be anything to teleport back, which is good because teleporting back something at that pressure is going to send a massive shockwave on Earth that is going to be quite destructive. You will be quite disintegrated, though the hydrogen that's left in you from the water that's in you could be used as fuel for the sun. <laughs> The Stefan Boltzmann law lets us calculate how much heat you'd absorb while inside the sun. Oh, here we it's go. not good. You would exceed the good. IEEE 1584B standard for second degree burns after one femtosecond in the sun. Yeah, femtosecond's way smaller than nanosecond. A nanosecond, the time you're spending there, is a million femtoseconds. This doesn't end well for you. But there's some good news. Deep in the sun, the photons carrying energy around have very short wavelengths. They're not visible light, they're mostly a mix of what we consider hard How and soft x-rays. This means that they penetrate into your body to various depths, heating your internal organs and also ionizing your DNA. Some of that happens at the surface, but this would be a much more extreme example. But it's going to be so instantaneous, even the effects of ionizing radiation at this point. The heat is enough to ionize. Causing irreversible damage before they even start burning you. Looking back, I realize I started that by saying there's some good news. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> don't spend a nanosecond inside the sun. In Greek Traveling legend, Icarus price. flew too close to the sun, and the heat melted his wings and he fell to his death. It's true that the temperature is higher closer to the sun, but temperature and heat aren't the same thing. Melting, or any phase change of- Yeah, heat's the energy. Energy is what does things to you a substance requires the absorption of a specific amount mm -hmm. of heat energy per kilogram. And the heat absorbed is a function of both the temperature and the length of time you're exposed to it. Which brings us back to Icarus. His wings didn't melt because he flew too close to the sun. They melted because he spent too much time there. I like that. While I did like this video, I do have to disagree with them on being able to survive one nanosecond on the surface. You would actually be better off going to the core because it would be instantaneous. No slow radiation poisoning. But that's just my immediate thoughts. I could be wrong. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.